Hey everyone, Sir Terrible here again. And like I mentioned yesterday, when I showcased this deck as one of the best decks to climb with, today you're actually gonna get a full video on Diana Leona, or Celespians, as it was popularized months ago. Now, after the Leona buff a few months ago, Leona has become one of the top champions in the game. And this combination that also gets access to some Shadow Owl tools like Quietus, Unspeakable Horror, and combines that with like the Winding Light, creates a really fun a scenario where you have two champions on Diana and Leona that have Challenger, plus combine that with the stuns from Leona and the other one from Winding Light, and you end up with a situation where you can just absolutely destroy the opponent by setting up like a big attack where you stun their blockers or give your units overwhelms and can challenge whatever other units they summon with Leona and Diana. I think people underrate, or maybe they don't underrate, I think everybody at this point knows how good Leona is. It's so underrated how easy it can be to have like a level of Leona, for example, go with a Sunhawk, stun two of the units, and knowing that whatever other unit the opponent summons, if they summon anything, it's just gonna get challenged by Leona to be out of the way. That's why Diana also ends up fitting up really well here because Diana can also be another challenger. And the reason that I like Diana as well is because it can combine one with the Winding Light to sometimes create a scenario where Diana with Overwhelm can potentially win the game as well. Now, we don't get a lot of things from, from, from Shadow Owls, but the things that we do get are pretty important. I think the Quietus is still very good in the current meta because it can hit stuff like, like Jumpers, and it can still hit stuff like Seraphim. For example, if somebody's playing that Seraphim Twisted Fate deck that I showcased a couple days ago. And I also really like the Unspeakable Horror because, again, it can do really well into the Slulu Gen deck. So it's kind of like a meta-dependent why this version with Shadow Owls does better than trying to play another region like Demacia with this deck, for example, because Unspeakable Horror can just be really good at removing a key unit from the opponent if you're going against like an aggro deck. The rest of the deck is pretty straightforward. You kind of just want to set up your Daybreak and sometimes your Nightfall and stuff, get a lot of valuable trades with Diana and Leona challengers, set up for like a really big Sun Guardian that can then get buffed up by the Winding Light, and in between all of that, you also have access to Solari Priestess for some additional value through the invoke of four, five, or six cost units or spells. Uh, overall, I think this deck is very, very solid. Honestly, the only thing wrong with this deck is that sometimes it loses to itself. It doesn't have a ton of draw aside from like Dark Cascade and the Solari Priestess value. So a lot of times you end up running out of resources really quickly. That's why I like the addition of Heaven's Align because it's a card that can generate other cards and allow us to actually enable our Daybreak or Nightfall effects and get some value out of them. So it's a way to kind of continue getting some value in our hand in times where we feel like we're really short, short-handed in value. But enough of me rambling. This is really a super good mid-range deck and one of the best decks I recommend climbing with at the moment. Hope you enjoyed today's games. And if you do, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. I'll see you at the end of the video for some mulligan tips. In this match, we're going against Jinx Echo. Leona is very good because he can stun their key champions. Mm -hmm. Do I care for Quietus? I don't think I care for Quietus, right? I think I'm looking for Leona because of the barrier, etc. I might... Oh, wait, now that I have this, I was going to think I might slam the Solari Soldier now, but... I think I still go for the Solari Soldier. I think I still go for the Solari Soldier. And just attack, take my three, start advancing on Leona. Play does bring a net stun because I probably don't want to play Diana. I don't want to play Diana to begin the turn with, anyways. So we go here. The problem is that the opponent could have Mystic or get excited to actually get rid of the Diana, which could be really annoying to deal with. And I want to play the Sun Garden on turn three. So we can save the Leo, uh, we can save the Diana until we actually get like Leona or something similar, right? Ah, the opponent is going all in on the predicts, huh? It's gonna be a level double echo by turn four. Hmm. And technically, even if we, I guess we have the Sunhawk, right? So, if the opponent plays echo in turn four, we can stun it with the Sunhawk and then set it up for Diana to kill him. But Diana, we still need the Pell Cascade or a second Diana for Diana to actually be able Only to kill him. Would enter battle unprepared. Yeah, we're not. We're nowhere near enough. Hmm. We could pop, we could make the Sun Guardian be as strong as possible. 
Okay, technically, I should I should be waiting for the winding light, but because I don't have the winding light, I think I'd rather attack and play around the opponent potentially having access to Voice of the Risen, right? Get rid of the units now to make the Chrono Break a little bit worse. Opponent ended up opting to block the Sun Garden anyway, so it ends up not mattering too much. We stop the Echo here. When I get the Chrono Break, we don't have Leona yet. Problem. Opponent should just open, open attack like next that. on the next attack turn, right? So even after we stun Never it here, they should still be in a good spot. Now I see why the opponent blocked this, right? Opponent blocked it because they didn't want to give too much help to this. Um. Well. That's one way. That's one way to get us started. <laughs> That's one way to get us there, huh? I was like, we don't have Leona, and then we just stop that thing. Opponent has to open attack now. Um, we can still just attack here and just push nine. I don't think we actually drag the echo, by the way. I don't think we give him the zero cost predict. I think we just attack, pull with Leona another unit, and just slowly grind them down. Now, opponent could decide to pass here, and then they're taking 13, which then means that next turn we just win the game. Oh, they get the drop border, so they get a blocker at least. That's not bad. I still don't think I, I, I still don't think I want to give them the predict. Now, the opponent's gonna have gents here. I'm gonna let them hit the gents. I'm gonna hit, hit let, let them hit them, let them hit the gents. Because I'm going to prep to double stun their units with Songhawk on our next attack turn to percent lethal. Right, so they can play Gens here, but we're still at 20 HP. I'm not too concerned about it. We can block the Echo with the Dustbringer, Shunt blocking. Even if the opponent has Gens, they still have three cards in their hand. So they still have to spend a lot of value to actually get there. And they're already down to 6 HP. So the idea is that we can play Songhawk on our nets. And this is Jens that we talked about. We can play Sunhawk on our next um, so attack, be able to stun both their units, right? Now, if they get to level up Jens here while also using the rocket, that will be a little bit annoying, but of course they don't have it. Because what I'm going to go here for is that I'm going to go Heaven's Align to still get the stun plus barrier from Leona. And save the Sunhawk for our attack turn so that we can take two of their blockers away and push the last six damage that we need. Um, you leave me no I think we're okay to just block everything. I think we're okay to just block everything. I think we are able to refill our board because of the Heavens Align and, and etc. That I don't think I need to worry about it. Do I even need to do? I think I'm still gonna go Heavens Align. I think I'm still gonna go Heavens Align. I'm still gonna go heaven saline and try to see if I can find like another like a knife of card that I could play. Unfortunately we didn't. Which tells me that I should probably Hmm. I should probably play the second Heaven Saline and see if we find a daybreak card instead. The play Diana and Protector. Sunhawk gives two stars. I would like to have a four fool here. But it has no way to level up gens, so I'm not too scared of this. They even draw more cards. The annoying part. Let's go Heaven Salon again. Hmm. Isn't this just lethal then? Send this your sleep though, because it's gonna stun their two weakest units, and then we can play Sunhawk. Even if the opponent commits blockers here, we get rid of two blockers with this, and then get rid of two more. I don't even. I'm not even gonna play Unspeakable Horror here unless the opponent plays a third blocker, because we already know that we can stun two of the other units. So we can go Sunhawk. <laughs> Crystal, okay, Crystal is annoying because he does kill Diana. 
The crystal does kill the Diana. But we're just gonna stun their whole board. Yeah, the crystal does kill the Diana. The Diana, I guess we can potentially level up Diana. When he's digging. If it's not another blocker here, I don't think the Prince Speaker will hold it. If it's another blocker, we can play it. Still cannot level up your gents, though. Because you ended up getting the crystal. Wait, he, they would have actually leveled up the gents. If they didn't get the crystal, they would have actually leveled up the gents, by the way. Oh, that's so tempting. I still like it here. I still like it here. Gives me the double stun. We can pull with Leona. And the Sun Guardian does the rest, right? Opponent showed us that they have a card in their hand that they couldn't play last turn. And they also drew the same card. So they have two copies of the exact same card because they went for the Kerpul Prep. So I don't care what they have in their hand. If it's, an, if it's a unit, we just pull it away and then kill them here. The Headside Crystal doesn't actually do anything. Is the cold shot, so they're digging. We can actually level up Diana. Hmm. So they have another cold shot in their hand. Should I actually... Should I... Like, how can they beat this? There's nothing that I have that can beat this, right? Because the Sun Guardian, even if the opponent... I know the opponent has another Cold Shot. Ah, the opponent has another Echo, right? Actually, we don't even need to pull anything. So we can just attack and just win. Yeah, because they didn't have a unit. I don't know what I was really thinking about that for. The moment that they didn't join another unit, it means that we could just push with Leona as well, and we have too many units compared to what, what they could block with. So, geez. In this match, we're going against Master G Karma. The opponent's gonna have a ton of removal for us, which is very bad. I like the baboon. I think it's too early for Leona. I like the baboon, but it's too early for Leona, in my opinion. The baboon is nice because it lets me generate cards. So even though the room is gonna definitely just straight up die, that's not bad. Double Priestess is also not bad in this matchup, in my opinion. I wonder if the opponent's playing Gohar. I wonder if the opponent's playing Gohar and they might Gohar this. Does Springer? I guess not. Okay. They did it because they want to be able to open attack, I guess, with the Disciple. Cool. You get some draw. Give my guess. We'll go Priestess. Start continue advancing the Leona, even though we're never going to get her. But I need to be able to just get as fast as I can. I kind of prefer the Traveler, I'm not going to lie. I think I prefer the Traveler and, and, and playing my luck here with the Invoke. I'm going to attack. If the opponent blocks, he sets them up for Diana. Makes them think that they have Pell Cascade as well. The, mo the, the fact that I took that long to think, opponent should have known that I don't have Pell Cascade. And should have just punished me for this, by the way. So they, they kind of ended up... Kind of playing into it by not really doing anything, right? Now we can go here with the Sun Guardian. Then we can go Priestess into Diana. I fight with my spirit, not my fist. Unfortunately, the opponent ends up getting out of the dragon and the double spell. So they end up getting the dragon link. So maybe Diana doesn't make sense anymore. Maybe we just go Solari Priestess again. Get the meteor shower. Force the opponent to keep mana for deny. Okay. I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna attack with everything. Maybe it uh, it makes them tap out. Maybe it makes them tap out of deny. Maybe it makes them tap out of deny. And the moment that they tap out of deny, I think I go for the disciple and the master G. And there we go. The Eye of the Dragon is annoying, but not impossible to deal with. Opponent also taps out of like a twin, so they have no way to save this. Boom. I think slowing down the draw is good. 
I'm still in a very tough spot though, and they got another one anyways. I think I'm still in a very tough spot. And obviously we have to start worrying about Gohar. Yeah, let's actually let's actually take this let's actually take this block so that we don't continue to just randomly die to a Gohar. I'm gonna go Raboon and force the opponent to vengeance this. When the one is now also leveled up, which is always nice. I guess opponent can have ruination next turn. If they have ruination, because we have the travelers, I don't I'm not afraid of being able to kinda go back in my hand. Okay, and they also have your they also have the pack enabled now. So they have the pack enabled. It's actually bad to do as many Gohars as they have as they have done so far. They tap out of ruination. They have the pack available. We can go Leona. Which the pack is still gets to kill the Sun Guardian, which kinda sucks. We're gonna go Leona. And I kinda like going for the for the owl to be honest if they if they go pack to kill this guardian it just means that they tap out of mana for other stuff they should probably just bang against this leona instead i like the twilight protector oh it's just a stun all right stun also works it also means that the opponent gets the Chiller dragon stun instead of the other things um this twilight protector we could stun both. We could stun two more units. I think it's actually the Twilight Protector though. Because we get both the Nightfall and the Daybreak effect while also being able to stun. And now we have this really big boar. Because it gave plus one plus one to my other units. He also puts the Guardian out of range and other stuff later on. If opponent has no way to kill Leona by the next time that we attack, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. They have to have another spell, right? Because they need to get the Dragon Link again. Dragon Ling, Dragon Ling again. Our hand is not horrible, but it's also kind of running out of value here very soon. Because I have to be worried. I mean, the good thing is that the opponent is kind of all in on the pack your backs. You challenge the wind? Opponent's kind of all in on the pack your backs, right? So if they don't have another spell, they don't even get to actually. We can somehow, somehow twice next turn. Stunning the whole board. There's the pack. That's what I that's what I was talking about. We're gonna actually play protector. We're gonna play protector. That way everything has plus one and doesn't die to like a well. This gives all my units plus one, that way they get protected from like a well or a battle piece. Or another Gohar, if the opponent has it in their hand. My concern now is how much can I can, how much can I do next turn? Like, do can I can I play? Why do they keep going after the sun guy? The sun guy. Can I actually play around ruination? Can I actually play around ruination? I don't think so, right? Ah, there we go. They finally. They finally got their vengeance, right? So they finally got the vengeance. That's what I was that's what I was talking about. They were gonna they were gonna get it sooner or later. Now, I still don't think we can play around ruination. I think what we have to do is gonna be Sunhawk into, into Diana. Now we can even go Speakable Horror instead. Because the Sunhawk stuns the tail of the dragon. We need to ping this guy out of the way. We can also go second somehow because we still have the uh, Raboon on the board. This Sun Garden is putting a lot of work. These Sun Gardens are putting a lot of work for us. But the Ruination is kind of scary. So I'm going to start with Unspeakable Horror here. Just to get rid of the lifesteal, make them feel less safe. And this is the Ruination. So now the opponent goes for the ruination. I think we go Traveler into Diana. Push the six damage. Actually, I, 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 I think I prefer the Shea Stalker instead. Living Legends is interesting. 
Great Beyond feels really good too. The problem is that the opponent already has Karma, so if it's the Great Beyond... I guess, isn't this one of the best things I can get anyways from... Like, if the opponent has Karma, they're gonna have double vengeance to deal with the Great Beyond. I don't think it's the Fallen Comet because of the Denies, right? It has to be Living Legends or Grey Beyond. Wow. I'm gonna lean towards the Living Legends. I'm gonna lean towards the Living Legends. Push the six and assume that the opponent has a Karma in their hand. They also have a Quietus, unfortunately. Okay, so Diana will have died. I have to assume that they have a way to deal with this. We can actually play Sunhawk and then Living Legends next turn, if, as long as we save two spell mana. Oh, they didn't get the Karma. They didn't get the Karma, so we get there. I, I don't know if Living Legends was still the correct choice. But one of the reasons why I like Living Legends is the play that I talked about, right? Because Living Legends uses spell mana, if we have 12 spell mana when we start the next turn, we can go Sunhawk first, using up our unit mana, then go Living Legends, refilling all our unit mana back to 10, and get to play whatever we get from Living Legends. So, GG's. In this match, we're going to get Sephelios, Zoe, Victor. So, it's going to be a very drawn-out game, in my opinion. I like the Pell Cascade, I like the Leona, I like the Diana, I like this whole hand. The Pell Cascade is to allow my Diana to actually survive. We're going to start with the Solari Priestess first. Oh, okay, now we can actually go ahead and go Dustbringer too. I don't want to play Diana until we have access to Pell Cascade to back her up so that she doesn't die to like a random Mystic. So we're gonna go here, just push two damage, play Solari Priestess, kind of take it a little bit slow. Take it a little bit slow. This lets us Ogre's progress. Leona, which is always nice. Party touch. Okay, so that means Senaphilius. So. What if it's Meteor Shower? Or what if it's just Golden Sisters and just put a ton of pressure on there? But Golden Sister comes down so late. I think I like the Meteor Shower. I think I like the Meteor Shower. I might just up to open attack as well. I mean, I guess we can go Sunhawk. We could go Sunhawk first. Stun the opponent. If opponent taps out of a mana point that I feel like Diana is not going to die. Perfect. So, opponent will need to have get excited here, right? So, it has to be exactly get excited. If they play anything else that's not get excited, we can Pell Cascade and kill the Aphelios. Moon sister. Has to be get excited. Um, I guess some fumes does work because it gives him a second weapon. So right away the some fumes will deal three. So get excited, some fumes. The opponent don't opponent would rather not use get excited by the way. Because they didn't want to have to discard anything, but I guess they don't have it. So I guess we get an affiliate for free. I'll take that. Question is, is it Pell Cascade or is it Unspeakable Horror? What if it's actually unspeakable horror here? I kinda wanna I kinda wanna get the nightfall card. I wanna I wanna make the opponent think that I don't have access to Pell Cascade. Like I want the opponent to think that I don't have access to Pell Cascade and that they can afford to like commit damage to kill our Pell Cascade value. So this is kinda the reason that I went for unspeakable is kinda like to block them, right? This is going to be great, because we can actually do this on turn 6. Hmm. I don't think it's worth it though, right? I guess it's putting a lot of pressure, but I don't think it's worth it. It's always going to be Sun Guardian. It's always going to be Sun Guardian here. We could go... Like, we could go Winding Light. When I 
Well, that taps me out. That taps me. That taps, taps, taps. That taps me out of too many things. So I think I prefer going Leona, knowing that I have access to the Pell Cascade, to be able to give the, Le the Diana Challenger and be able to pull from there. Now, opponent discarded a head splitterator earlier when they did the Poro Cannon. So they will have to have a second one here. We also stunned the Reggie, so the opponent will be taking a lot of damage anyways. The only downside is that we cannot level up Diana here. Shock Blast? Yeah, so that's unfortunate. Yes, we can just go like this and just push six. Start, start setting him up for like a winding light to finish the game. Nope. Oh wait, I guess we can I guess we can go meter shower, right? We can go meter shower, that's what we picked it. Opponent should stun this if they went for the stun. Yeah, we can go meteor shower here. Kill Aphelios and Zoe. Perfect. Now we get two champions for the cost of one card that we randomly generated. Okay, our opponent doesn't even get a second value from the weapon. Alright, they went for Sandom too. What is going on? We have enough mana next turn to go so Sunhawk to give two stuns and then go Winding, winding Light. So we have a lot of value here. The winding light should be enough to present the the lethal. So we have nine, so we can go. No, sorry, we have eight. Oh no, but we have the we have the dust pedal. We have the dust pedal, so this winding light is gonna cost six. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. In my head, I was like, this costs six, and that's because we have the dust pedal to actually discount it, because we have the spell mana. So we can go dust pedal, winding light, hell cascade, and be completely fine. They all this also gives Diana Challenger and levels her up. And we have Pil we have Pilka Escape uh, as a backup too. This didn't give the mana back, so they also don't have. Yeah, and then we just go like this, winding light, everything gets overwhelmed. Diana levels up as well, which means that her her Pilka Escape is gonna be even more value in, in the Diana because of everything having overwhelmed. And this should finish up the game. And there we go. GG's. In this match, we're going against Rico Reds, who is playing Seju Annie, huh? Hmm. Why is my screen messed up? Let's fix my screen first. I like... Mm, I like this draw. I kind of like the Sun Guardians, to be honest. I like the Sun Guardian because they're going to be really BP units that the opponent's going to have to deal with. Now, I do need to be careful that I, I don't just straight up lose, though. That I don't straight up get our value. Oh, wh whatever. Let you get it. Let you get it. I don't want them to get a Sejuani treatment turn one for free. I want to play Sun Guardian, Sun Guardian, House Speaker, right? When it still gets the trigger here, gets it's gonna get another trigger on turn three if they open attack. At this point, I think we're gonna commit to just making our Sun Guardians as big as possible. We have so many Daybreak units. That the Sun Guardians are gonna be huge. If the opponent does an open attack, this is gonna go to 4 HP, and this can get us to 5 to beat the Tusk Speaker. And there we go. If the opponent instead, I guess if the opponent attacks with both, if the opponent attacks with both, I should probably just go here. I think it's still too early for the. I think it's too early for the. Uh, for the Pale Cascade. Now we are taking a lot of damage, so of course we are vulnerable to the opponent having access to atrocity as the game goes longer. We have we can always trigger the pill cascade with the dust pedal. When it gets Gwen, okay, so that's gonna be problematic. That's gonna be even more damage. I guess we still kill it with the pill cascade. Opponent should just open attack now and, and play around the Leona. And also any other daybreak that we might have to trigger the Sun Guardians. This has to be an open attack, right? Am I missing something? I guess that's what I'm missing. I'm missing a bunk club gamers. 
I'm missing the bump of gamers here. Wow. So, we can kill this girl. We're still just gonna die. Yeah, we're still gonna die here shortly, unless we get a, unless we get another out. We're gonna need to get an out. This doesn't work because it's so easy. For, I should have played the heaven side. It's so easy for the opponent to have anything here that could take this hit. Has to be Solari. Fallen Comet. We can buff this up as much as we can. But if the opponent has access to like Battle Fury, I have to block because he's doing exactly eight. This is rough. This is gonna be rough. We can go Heaven's Align, this buff it up to five. Hmm. Let's see what we get here first. Doombies? It's eight plus four, it's gonna be nine. I don't think the Doombies really helps us. I don't think the Doombies really helps us. I guess it's the same, right? Because we're, we're either blocking two here. Opponent has access still to... Uh, opponent still has access to the Battle Fury. Because they have exactly a mana. We're forced to block here. And because we're forced to block, opponent just wins the game. Atrocity. Okay. Atrocity still beats us, though, is the problem. Yeah, Atrocity still beats us. It's Pierce Unleashed. We're gonna have to go... We're gonna... We have to try to beat the second Spirit Unleashed. Opponent could also have access to... There's so many outs. There's so many outs here. But I have to play around the second Spirit Unleashed. Oh, wow. Do I play around the second Spirit Unleashed? <sighs> Are we used to lose Unspeakable? It has to be the Spirit Unleashed for us to be in a bad spot. We can go Twilight Protector into Winding Light. If the opponent has it, they have it. I'm gonna opt not to play around it. We still lose to the Overwhelm, by the way. This is not lethal, is it? It's not lethal. We lose to the Overwhelm on the open? Oh, ho, 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 ho. It is lethal. Huh. Wow. <laughs> it is lethal. Wow. Okay. No Speak of Horror. No Atrocity. No Second Spirit Unleashed. We'll take that. We will take that. I should have done the math before we drop down the, the Winding Light. A little bit greedy of me not to, so GG's. In this match, we're gonna against Lulu Jens. We do have enough anti-aggressive tools, right? We don't have any units though, which is a little bit concerning. I might keep the Quartus just so that we don't take that much damage early on. Probably was better to go for like Diana though, to be honest. Hmm. That's a great draw. That's a great draw because now I don't have to use Quartus in turn one. I can just go Dustbringer. And be okay blocking into the bird ringer. Alright. Those bringer, bell ringer. <laughs> I end up doing a rhyme there, didn't even realize. So, definitely want to start leveling up our Leona. So, I'm gonna go ahead and go Solari Soldier, just push some damage here too. A little bit concerning, but I think it's the best time to take this attack is now. I guess it's the same, because our thing's gonna go down to two. Uh, to two power anyways. Oh, this is kind of rough. This is kind of rough, huh? Hmm. 
Yeah, let's go Sunhawk. Let's go Sunhawk for now. We can save the Quattos in case that we draw Diana, that way we don't have to use the Dust Petal. We can go Priestess here, try to get some answers. I have to go Meteor Shower, right? It's my way to answer the gents. My concern with Meteor Shower is that the rest of my hand is not very good. But we do have a lot of hand generation here. Wow, opponent gets a crazy draw. Let's go like this. Let's go quiet to see it. That way I know I have blockers for the rest of their stuff. Don't know if I want to use the Heaven's Alliance just yet. I, opponent just showed us they don't have gens, by the way. By doing it the way that they just did, opponent just showed us, hey, I really don't have gens, so you can do whatever you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just play the Leona out. That way we stun one of their units, and Leona becomes a really good blocker against the rest of their attackers. We can always just straight into the squeaker, that's no problem because we're gonna be able to heal it with the speak of a horror afterwards. Um <laughs> Kel Maiden? Alright, maybe we actually commit this on the Kel Maiden so that we don't get pranked. I think that's probably slightly better. Back heretic. I'm willing to do it. I think I'm willing to I, I think I'm willing to put damage on the Leona. I think I'm willing to put damage on the Leona here. I don't want him to get the prank, so I think the speaker with horror there is correct. We still have access to that meteor shower that we talked about. We can get some trades here by going to Heaven's Align, giving ourselves the daybreak stun. And now we can go Chase Stalker as well. That lets us trade. We get another. Daybreak unit. If they commit to get excited here, they're gonna get punished by the Pell Cascade. I understand why they did it, but now you have another you have to have another form of removal to actually kill us here, and it cannot be a pokey stick, because if it's a pokey stick, we just play around it again. Now unfortunately, he does get rid of our spell shield. Ah, uh, our spell well, our barrier. And it is another Poké Stick, so I'm just gonna play second Pale. We have the second Leona now. Opponent's kind of incentivized to open attack because if they don't open attack, if they don't open attack, then they get stunned by Leona. Still have the access to the meteor showers, so we can actually kill both their units. And might be willing to use sacrifice the Leona, to be honest. Oh, okay, so that makes it even easier for us. Now we can just play Leona out. Nice try. <laughs> nice try. Nice try, my friend. Now, the opponent could have gents, but I don't think the opponent has a way to actually level up gents, even if they play her out here. So I think I'm cool with this. <laughs> and opponent just surrendered. Yeah, unfortunately, having access to this, they spend so much of their turn trying to kill a Leona for us to just have another one and they obviously didn't have the gens based on the mechanisms of the pick so ggs hey welcome back everybody hope you enjoyed today's games you kind of see exactly what we're talking about you saw multiple games today where we got to win with the winding line games where we got to just turn the opponent to death because of Leona and you can see how big the sun guardian can get this deck kind of does it all and that's why we really like it and you, because you're on Shadow Isles, sometimes you can also adjust this deck depending on the meta, right? Like, I think the Speaker of Horror is really good right now, and so is Quietus because of those, like, Jens Lulu decks. But if you're going into more, if you're going against some more greedy decks, you can play stuff like Vengeance, right? That way you can kill, like, some of the key champions as they drop down. So you can adjust this to be meta dependent, and that's why I really, really like it as well. But overall, it's very solid, and definitely recommend you climbing with this if you're if you like the Leona archetype in general and the, and the general idea of a game plan. In terms of Mulligan, I like trying to level up Leona early, but I also think having the Sun Guardian is just so important. The earlier you, the earlier you have him in the field, the bigger and bigger he's going to get. So Sun Guardian is a must keep. Leonari Dust Bringer is also a must keep because the Dust Petal can reduce the cost of your Winding Light, allowing you to sometimes get a 6 cost Winding Light on the field on turn 6. 
if you need to. Or even in that one game that you saw us win, where we combined the Sunhawk into the one link die on turn eight, because you're able to save spell mana to for the dust for the dust pedal to be able to actually reduce the cost of one in light of how much unit mana is gonna cost you. Uh, so yeah, so I'm looking for Dustbringer and looking for Sun Guardian and sometimes Diana and Solari Soldier, depending on the attack token that I have. So also match dependent if you're going against Agri, then Speaker of Horror can be really good and quite just as well in such a situation. But that's enough for me. Hope you enjoyed today's games. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post NY videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch at where we stream every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.